WPI, World Premier International Research Center Initiative. The LPI centers attract excellent researchers from all over the world. Official language is English. These institutes are home to many young, active researchers. Let's look at what a few of them are doing. I'm using mathematical tools to study organic crystals, which are promising materials for next generation electronics. The movement of charge in a crystal is very important for electronics and is strongly affected by random thermal motions and molecules in the crystal. Stochastic analysis is a powerful mathematical tool for analyzing how random thermal motions affect charge movement. The analysis shows that randomness helps charge move over short distances but prevents charge from moving over very large distances. Applying mathematics to material science is very challenging and leads to many interesting insights. I've wanted to study the stars since I was a kid. Today, I don't exactly study stars, but galaxies with tens of billions of stars. I'm interested in how galaxies get their shapes. One thing that affects galaxy shapes is collisions between galaxies. Collisions at first make a mess, but eventually things settle into a spherical soccer ball galaxy. Almost all galaxies have had a collision at some point, even though only a few are happening now. But this would make all galaxies soccer balls, and we know that's not true. So these double yolk galaxies lead to more questions about how galaxies get their shapes. The unending supply of questions is why I keep doing astronomy. When I was a kid, I used to learn making things using Legos, like an airplane or a spaceship. Now that I'm a chemist, I have a smaller building blocks than Legos to play with, so-called molecules. I am currently interested in creating jungle gym like framework materials by assembling molecular building blocks and controlling the capture and release of biologically important molecules. By teaming up with biologists in our institute, we are recently thrilled because we directly observed our synthetic materials control the function of living cell. Such a moment motivated me to create even better materials. There was a science fiction movie I saw when I was a kid. A special team of scientists on the submarine were injected into a patient's body to save him. I was thrilled by the powerful and beautiful scenes and felt I wanted to see that world for myself. Now we can use MRI and CT scanners to get a visual picture of inside the human body. My work involves developing MRI technology to enable visual tracking and evaluation of immune cells in the brain. What do immune cells do when the brain is health, diseased, or stressed? It is like taking a trip through one's own body. I want to learn the secrets of life using imaging technology. We can sense the world by our five senses sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. Nowadays, our mobile phones have cameras to see, microphones to hear, and touch panels to interact with, but still no tongue or nose, which have been long-standing challenges for decades. If we can integrate an artificial nose into our mobile phone, it can save our life by detecting traces of cancer from our breath at a very early stage. Moreover, scavenging landmines, monitoring pollutions, all of these things will become possible. So it will change the world and save the earth. Let's make it together through nanotechnology.
I was always interested in science when I was young. I loved reading books about the weather and space travel and the universe, as well as visiting museums with my parents. Um, pencil graphite is made of lots of sheets of single layer graphene, which slide off onto your paper when you write. I make large amounts of this graphene and use it in fuel cells. Specifically, I engineer the chemical structure of graphene by doping it with nitrogen or phosphorus or boron to make cheap electrocatalysts, which avoids the use of expensive platinum. First, I worked on carbon nanotubes, and I started to study graphene because I was inspired by the unconventional attitude of Andre Geim, who first used uh, sticky tape to isolate graphene from graphite. When I was in junior high school, I got a home chemistry kit on Christmas, and this was the best toy I ever got. Thereafter, I wanted to become a chemist and eventually studied biochemistry. The sleeping habits of humans are unique in the sense that we often defy sleep and stay awake. Motivation is often accompanied by the use of psychoactive substances, most prominently caffeine. We discovered that caffeine keeps us awake through inhibiting the activity of adenosine, an inhibitory neuromodulator involved in regulating the sleep-wake cycle in the nucleus accumbens. My lab is interested in how motivation interferes with our need for sleep. Curiosity about our environment is what made me get into research. For me, geophysics is a good balance between fundamental and more applied physics. My current research helps investigate the origin of our moon. The current view for its origin favors a giant impact between the proto-Earth and a large body. By conducting numerical simulations of the lunar evolution, we can test hypotheses on its early state. For example, we constrain the core condition that can match magnetic history. We also propose a way to explain the observed magmatic asymmetry. Plants are essential for our life. There's a huge variety of plants with different sizes, shapes and components that we can use for making food, fuel for cars or building materials. This variety could be controlled by molecular switches that we can use to make plants better, like their size, their productivity or energy efficiency. My aim is to find molecules that control these switches. And here at the ITBL Mix Lab, this is possible in a highly efficient way, as biologists work closely together with chemists. When a biologist identified an interesting molecule, the chemist can synthesize different versions of this molecule, which can be quickly tested in plants by the biologist. Thank you.